Alrighty, let's play this for everybody to watch here. All right, a couple of things about this. I think the two biggest, eh, three biggest things to me are a uh, there's a lot of overlocking, overlocking. What's the word? It's just an overextension of your, of your IK arm. Um, kind of missing the right words here, but again, it's just a very, very overstretched arms there. Um, the second thing is, I don't think this is needed. It's a bit distracting. It doesn't really add anything to the story. It doesn't add an additional conflict where maybe he's trying to get it in, but he can't get it high enough. So then every time he tries, the cart goes away, goes away, goes away, and he just keeps walking, walking, goes off screen, which could be a gag where you're taking away the Simon and making it, and it's something different, right? So it's kind of the conflict is not the weight. The conflict is to get this in here. And because it has wheels, he never makes it and it just goes off screen and it just happens to involve weight. So it's almost like one of those how to take your animation to the next level uh, examples. Um, but as of now, it doesn't really affect him. He doesn't really change the grip. It's just kind of there. So personally, it's also really fast, that move. Um, I personally would take it out. I would just keep this here have him turn around and then try to put it in uh, and then I would slow this down it's a bit high frequency but just to go back to be clear the things that I would pay attention to the overextension of that same here so every time you overextend those arms it kind of uh, sprays those arms um, speaking of which they seem super super short he barely has a moment where he's straight up so if he gets really straight, arms, you know, here, it feels like that hand would be around here, even though that should be usually the kind of mid thigh. So I'm not sure what's going with unless he is standing and his arms are like this and you don't really have him low. So I'm not sure what this rig is. The proportions seem really, really off. So I would kind of look at this. I mean, they're not that long. Let's see here, they'll be here. I don't know, they just seem really short. So I would take a look at these and make sure that nothing's broken or some scale assets are there, some channels are changed. I don't know. I will look at that first before you go into all full detail into fixing your arms. Uh, and the other big thing is this. Besides those movements being twinned and all move at the same time, it's kind of like, it's kind of a classic, dare I say, beginner move of once a character is done, arms just go down and swing around as if a robot was turned off and the arms just kind of swing until they stop. It just turns into kind of a pendulum assignment, which is not something a normal human being would do unless there's a very specific acting point to it. And maybe, you know, within the context in the situation, uh, it would make more sense. But right now, this just seems really, really weird. I would personally, what I would just do is do this here. And when it's done, like see how he immediately he goes away from it from the melon watermelon i would go and he really goes with it he swings forward so that boom when this happens he's actually here body forward and then his arms can kind of rest here those are horrible legs but anyway he'll be like this so that instead of this he rests his arms on it and then he can be like that and that way it kind of adds to the thing of, well, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, this was really heavy, so I'm going to use the cart to rest my hands on because I'm tired and I don't have enough um, power and force and muscle strength to keep them even just straight. So, I mean, um, to me, that would feel more natural. It would be something that kind of would fit the scene and fit his, I would say state of mind, but his you know level of uh, fitness, if you will, versus this swinging that just kind of weird. Not a massive fan of that. Um, those are the biggest things. The other stuff I would do here. This seems a bit fast. This roll, this roll up here. So he grabs it here and goes. Rrr. I don't know. I would go. Rrr. And this is pretty heavy because if that's the watermelon, it's kind of grabbing it from the middle, which will give this a lot of weight. So I would almost do, personally, I would do uh, relax, have this arm re-grip it at the top while the other one 
can be lower just for offset and asymmetry. And then when he lifts it up, that arm will be up here and not that straight. So we'll have a little bit of a bend there. And you can hold it here while the other one is behind it, but we can't really see it, which is fine. Maybe the fingers are here, but this would seem like a bigger, uh, a better pivot point. If the, I mean, if the pivot is here and he holds it from the top, it would seem like it would be easier and better to lift than go low and grab all of this weight. I think the the uh, turning and pulling and you know that motion and the physics of it, I think would make more sense. And then you could potentially keep that speed. I would still make it probably like 20% slower. Then, once you have that, I like that you go down and readjust, which would be cool because then if that hand is up here, then you can have a little moment that's maybe a second longer. Then bring the hands down. Whoa, uh, hands down here. Maybe the other fingers out here if you can reach. But again, those arms are so short, so I don't think so. But then you have time for a re-grab and then you got to slow it down. So right now you go to here, Go straight into that so you can give this a, a few more frames for the readjustment from up here to down here and then whoa, this seems really really fast and also really going in a very but if you would look at the physics of it this is so heavy and then here it goes down right so this is the edge of the thing as he pulls the moment it gets off of that wooden edge here it would just go Phew! it would just drop the thing is i don't think you would go and pull so hard to go back even if you would then would have like visually i would have an arc in there but if that's such a fast pull then to me it would go oh a with an arc go here but they would have so much force that then he would kind of move his butt will move to here potentially a step back here and even maybe a turn in y and it would be just a much more a, a bigger impact of him pulling so hard that he has to take a couple steps. I think that I would either do this, right? So if you want to keep this, give this a bit more of a more appealing arc than just a straight fashion there, but then have some uh, consequence of such a big fast pull with something that's that heavy instead of just locking here being still. Or he starts to roll because it's so heavy, right? And he doesn't really have that much power except leaning backwards. He can't really lift it up high. So if he just pulls it over the edge, it would drop and it would be more of a swing down like that. Which again, you might have to add a step like this here, but maybe halfway, just an adjustment step as it goes to here. So it would be, be more of a over and then oh, it drops quick because it's so heavy. And then he brings it back up and then for a step for a readjustment into here. So what I would do is instead of doing this, I would take that out, like I said, and kind of work on that moment through there to have a bit more of an adjustment step. Either with this drop like this and a swing up or with a big pull back and then really have a, a um, have to take a step or two. This as an idea, let's pretend everything else before that was okay and we we're starting here. Just I'm just looking at that move only. It's kind of cool. I don't mind that just because it's so heavy. He just has to kind of pivot off one leg and has to take a, a, a long step there to get over there. It's just the problem with the physics of this, the body mechanics is that once you're here, he is leaning this way. The foot is so far this way that the, um, the center of gravity and the balance is off, especially with this being so heavy. At this point, he would fall over. So let's even pretend that the foot was here a bit more steady even then it would be really hard for him to move over this way so quickly if you look at his root and the whole body phew, you need something that leg would have to be positioned like this so that the shin and the thigh are pointed this way right so that he would have force in this leg to push himself over this way Right now, there's nothing, A, he would collapse over this way anyway, but there's physically nothing that will make him go this way. Just the mechanics, the body mechanics just don't really work here. Watch out for this. Here just kind of takes one step and it's a very slidey step. At least here there's a bit of a tilt over and you can imagine it's a bit off the ground. 
but this one just feels a bit slow in timing, very even in timing. And then he just kind of leans over and it would really, really hurt his back. To me, it seems like if you're in a position like this, I would have him lean backwards and with a lot of the, you know, those O-shaped bow-legged legs here, um, take quick, 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 quick steps. So to me, it would be the contrast of movement of someone going, just that's like, a big, slow move. And then readjust and then go forward. Otherwise you have move, step, step. So it's very even in timing, all those beats. So to me, in terms of contrast, this would be step, 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 step into a turn here. This I'm not quite buying the way either because it's mainly coming out of his, you know, his forearm and a little bit of his upper arm bicep, uh, biceps area here. So I think you would have to have more of a move back with his head, then the back, then his arms. He's kind of, I need more momentum. He needs to swing himself back to get this into here, which is cool. And then you can always anticipate the whole thing by lowering the root and going up, right? So he goes, he goes down and then it's, so it's a head up, chest back, push up with the legs for the root to go up and that whole thing swings the uh, watermelon over. And again, I wouldn't do those arm swings. I would probably just keep them up here, resting. And then this is a bit fast for this to go up could be over one frame, but then going down over one frame, especially coming back is a bit weird because you have the watermelon going a bit this way. It's left or right. It's not full straight down. So if this goes up, I will bring this back down over at least two frames, if not three, if I kind of play with this a bit, I'm curious what the feel would be. But then the wheel would be here. You want to have, bam, you want to forward or screen right, um, forward for him, but screen right movement of that cart here this just feels too fast and maybe that even maybe that's even too big you can go up and then down over two frames but the height here cut that in half which will slow the whole thing down that might even be better i don't mind this stuff here that's kind of okay but i will probably do a little bit of, like i say a little bit of a uh, translate and roll of this cart here so by the end of maybe here-ish, you know, that card could be here. It could still have a little bit of a roll. Uh, and I'm not sure if you have any control over these guys. They would have to rotate a bit. Carts usually have uh, rotation in the front wheel so you can turn, turn that thing. Alrighty. I mean, there's other stuff, you know, in terms of the facial expressions, finger poses. Uh, polish on the feet, like stuff like here, feels like you're overextending that leg, there's not enough foot roll, but I feel like uh, I don't want to get into this, into this right now because there still seems to be, you got to choose on what you want to do with this moment. Again, I would take this out, I would take smaller steps to get there, and then this whole area is just such a big and different um, move body mechanics wise that this seems like bigger chunk for you to fix. Uh, and just as a visual thing, I would not mix photos with CG elements. It's just kind of a weird mix between a lot of texture variety. Even here, that's a lot of texture stuff with very plain textures here. I would keep it within this style. Even this might be too much. Uh, and just simplify, simplify the look of it. Also, I believe in terms of the perspective, this seems a bit off. So I would just personally... Take, you know, add geometry pieces in the back if you want to fill in this background, but I would take the, the photo away and just keep it all, all CG. All right, that's that for this one. Now, this clip is even more broad strokes just because the first time I was watching this, I was slightly confused as to what was happening. I did ask you and you wrote in an email back that he's saying hi to the audience, which I'm not sure if that helps. It's still confusing. Basically, when I was watching this, I was going, okay, he's saying hi, but to whom? Is is kind of looking at us? Or is it slightly just to the right of camera? I'm not sure. Okay, let's continue. Okay, wait, what is he looking for? Why is he so angry, concerned? It's a weird going from 
hi, and then this. Like, okay, mm, I guess he's looking for something. It's a bit of a weird acting break besides some sliding feet there, but... Okay, so then he looks over here, sees this, but then he seems really... I don't know, it's weird, because you go into a bit of a confused look, but if you're confused... Okay, maybe you're not, you're not looking for this, or why are you confused? But then he seems really freaked out. Really freaked out. Okay, why? But then he takes the time to close the door. If you're that freaked out, then you would either get to this thing as quickly as you can, or get away from it. You know, it's either you're afraid from it, uh, of it, and you want to go away, or you're really interested in it and you want to get to it quickly. But then to take the time to close the door, that feels a bit weird. And then this suddenly happens. I mean, I know this slams down, I guess this comes loose, but then it suddenly turns into that with a lot of weird stretching, like where the, the physicality of head gets very uh, water balloony. I'm not a massive fan. I mean, this is might potentially be a bit subjective as well, but usually for, I mean, for stretchy stuff, I would look at what parts can stretch, parts of the body, limbs could stretch, you know, stuff like this, and a bit in the head, but still, even in cartoon fashion, there's still a skull that's hard. So you can stretch like this area, uh, the cheeks and the bit of the jaw down and kind of the fleshy parts you can stretch. But for the upper part to balloon like that feels a bit weird. But then he moves over here and then holds on to that. Wait, how does he hold on to this? This is a bit weird too because he brings his arm back really, really far. But I say, like, okay, then he's really, really knocked out. But we're spending a lot of time on this. So if you watch this, he goes, oh. <gasps> And then you feel like, okay, let's let's get to this. But you go, wait, why did you take time? Okay, okay, got hit. Okay, well, now he's really stumbling for a long time. Holy moly. Okay, now he's finally there. And then, and then what? Now, <laughs> what happens? So there's no ending. So, I don't know. It feels to me like there's just not the right focus. I'm not sure what he's trying to tell. Why is he saying hi to the audience? Okay, if he comes in and it's right in front of him, I know maybe this might be too picky, but it's right in front of him. But I guess, okay, I'm assuming he's looking for this then. But then why is he freaked out? Or is that supposed to be really excited? But then he doesn't look excited here. He looks confused and then freaked out. I don't know, it's very confusing. Here it looks like, okay, I'm ready to eat this. But then this happens. And then this, as he gets kind of ready with the weird, I won't say tangent, it's not a tangent, but it's a weird overlap with the tip of the banana on his nose. Just the, sta the staging is a bit weird, but, but, and then what? So I would look at what's your main objective of the character? What does the character want? Does he want to eat? Okay. Then if he's that excited, like, why is he that excited? Is he really hungry and exhausted? So maybe coming in here would be more like, ah, ah, and it's really hot outside or something, or he's just really hungry instead of this happy thing. And that way he would be so happy to see this because, oh, I can finally eat. And then right before he gets it, something happens where the food gets away and then that's his the struggle of getting to the food. I don't know, like whatever you want to do, but there's something where I'm just not quite getting the, the objective. So to me, even if everything was really, really well animated, I think there's still a lot to do in terms of Timing and mechanics, even though that's a good one here, that's cool. It's just very confusing, especially this part is really, really long. So just kind of the pacing of it and the focus of it is, to me, so confusing. Or just not clear enough. It's not massively confusing in terms of me flipping the table over, but it's just not very focused and it's just, I've kind of lost interest by now. And I'm just not sure what's going on. So if you can find a clear... This is the character, this is his objective, and make it clear A to B, that's what's happening, or on the path from A to B, there's something that happens in the middle, there's a conflict, there's a problem, and then what does the character do to get over it? Because for now, this coming down and hitting him has really no bearing on this. It doesn't really influence this at all. He's just delayed in getting to this, 
but in a way this is the same as this just closer so why was that here so i don't know to me personally i would if if you're already adding all that effort and work in i would make this a bit more character driven and with an objective and it's something where you can play with something where maybe he slams the door and then because of that this beam falls down from somewhere else hits the table and then these guys fly around and he goes no i don't want this to fall down or get wasted or splat down or whatever maybe there's something else that could break and then you get into something like this where he's running around as these guys fall and he's juggling and trying to to catch everything i know there's something else that you could do that could push your body mechanics in a way that you you're doing here but with something that makes more sense yeah i hope i make sense if not let me know email me um but that's it for this one so i want to get a bit of a back and forth via email so that we can kind of clarify and and give you a, a good objective and good path uh and focus for the shot all right thank you all right there's an email you can sign up you can start whenever you want you can submit whatever you want you get 16 submissions either way a like and subscribe would be awesome all right thank you